so the recording has started <clears throat> and then if by any chance if it goes away what happens is some of me will be some of them will be informing me because in one of the sessions what happens is that the recording by mistake i have stopped it uh, so what happens you just keep a watch of this number go there so welcome back all of you to the next day session on fusion inventory and fusion shipping implementation so let me go there and then rajesh is a new join in now so here uh, what i have done is uh, i initially created what an enterprise structure actually so a complete enterprise structure has been created right from uh, ledger legal entity chart of accounts everything has been created now so this is uh, basically from scratch actually so i did a implementation project and then i assigned the roles and then i configure offerings and then what is the implementation project and then how the enterprise has been structured then i created the locations then the legal jurisdictions have been made now and then afterwards the legal authority legal interests <coughs> and the legal entity and then afterwards the legal entity hcm information is the important one here what happens one uh, uh uma of our batch what happens she got stuck actually fine she is anybody who created an employee because what happens if you don't give, provide the ldg fine the uh, legislative document what happens you will not be able to do it actually fine she has uh, forgot other than afterwards she refers the meta link and then afterwards she solves the problem but what happens is all there in my thing and then go through and then take notes if you take notes what happens you will not be finding any difficulty at all there's no fine and then i have created the accounting calendars not and then afterwards what happens the sort of account structures <coughs> with which what happens i created what happens the four natural accounts for this not training i know that so i have not created four such natural accounts for this not and then uh, with which we did it now then i created the primary ledger <coughs> then out of the specific ledger options has been done as in legal ledger ledger and then the balancing segments have been done and if i i'll review on them summary today so what happens the skilled and financial structure is in place and so what happens on that only we are all working on it now afterwards we open the period and then we create the business units and then the assigned business unit business function has been done now <coughs> so go there then afterwards what happens the set assignments have been done now so <coughs> the reference data set <coughs> and then afterwards i go on there i created the jobs the departments positions <coughs> and then employment have been created now and then afterwards i given lot of roles for them now fine so many roles i have given but in fact what happens i explained each and everything about what the roles are going to do now uh, in reality what happens you'll be giving roles only whatever is required for your people now and go there and afterwards again i want to go on down then afterwards i created the uh, what happens the inventory activity fine what is exactly an item org and then what is an inventory org I explained and then afterwards the facility work the patterns schedules and then org creation and then what happens i take the location to org and then afterwards sub inventories are created then manage carriers and transit times is required for transfer orders actually a very important one so if the transit time is not specified what happens you will not be able to perform the transfer orders as such no fine over there then the data access has been reduced new as far as release rule is concerned so there has been explained over there now and then afterwards the life cycle phases and then transaction reasons and then costing setup has been done now so we did a costing setup and then what happens we costed a product because item if it is not costed transfer orders are going to fail now actually and then afterwards i did it and then i was not pushing to the costing for costing transaction then afterwards the procurement setups have been done now fine right? some basic procurement setups have been done now and then afterwards i did and then i gone to the inventory controls now so there are five controls over there serial control lot control revision control locator control and the middle status control all these things have been described and afterwards what happened i gone to the transfers now so i made a miscellaneous is an issue and then transaction source and pipe and then account address transfers then the moment request which is equal to move orders of evs and then what happens itd and then afterwards intro transfers direct and in transit have been done and then afterwards Number they go there. Then the replenishments are begin now, and only one replenishment technique has come now. Min max has been done now. So min max at the sub middle level sourcing, and then the order man supply level sourcing as well as org level sourcing. Everything have been done. And then I want to the shipping, and then I have created the release sequence rule, the pixel grouping rule, the release rule, as well as what happens the other ones. The uh, then uh, what happens there are four ways of uh, PRing. So we discussed about it, and then finally what happens we created all these rules in the fusion, and then uh, uh, we did the pick way move order, and then moment request everything has been done now. So by the way, what happens the min max planning has been completed now. Then afterwards the remaining replenishment techniques have been explained only in EVs now. Fine, they are ready to come now. The reorder point planning, Kanban, and then replenishment counting, and then the periodic order planning replenishments they have been explained in uh, EVs. and then as soon as it comes in fusion i will now make another separate video and then i will now send it to you and then again i am requesting all the people what happens whenever they find that it is now come in release 13 fine you please send me the document or whatever it is fine and then i will now go through that and i will now practice and i will now make a video record for all this replenishment techniques actually now we are into inventory accuracy we have completed the abc analysis as well as cyclic counting now we are into physical inventory okay fine this we are not over there so we are into this place now uh good so tushar is it to come anita is also it to come now and that's not what to do i cannot do <laughs> so they are really very active participants now so arivu tushar and then uh, uh, what was thomas <clears throat> they are all really very active now uh, so we'll now see this we'll now go and then see the physical inventory 
So cyclic counting is now done periodically to establish the inventory accuracy. You know, the actual what happened, the system quantity may not match the actual quantity. Whereas physical inventory is not like that. Physical inventory is the one where what happens, uh, the, it is an audit requirement. At the end of the year, what happens, the audit has to sign you a balance sheet. In the balance sheet, you would have written the, happens, uh, the land is worth of this much of money. The building is this much of money. The missionaries is worth of this much of money. Then what happens, the audit can very easily make a scrutinization. Okay, There is a two boiler and then one turbine. They can very easily count. Right? And then they can say, okay, take, tick mark, tick mark. They will not put it. But what happens as far as inventory stock is concerned, you will now say around 50 crore rupees worth of what happens inventory is there in your inventory. So that has to be counted. So only when you count what happens, the uh, the thing which you are projecting on your balance sheet will be approved by the audit actually. This is an external order. So the external order has to approve it for which what happens, you will not perform it once in a year or otherwise if you are doing your what happens, balance sheets and then you are now reporting to the government twice, then what happens, it will be done twice a year. So physical inventory is an audit requirement actually. So for which what happens is they will now make a verification of this now. So let us go first of all and see about how it's being done in uh, EBS now. Fine, go there. So I will not change the organization now. Fine, go there. I will not change the organization to what happens here. P503. And then I will now go and have a look at the online quantity now. Fine, go there. Double on it. <clears throat> then I click on find now. So before which what happens, you will now see what exactly has been done in this place now. Fine, go there. So if you go to the fusion inventory, and then put the EBIS documentation. So we have got uh, what happens. Uh, there are four types of documentation I've been given to you. One is the inventory, one is the manufacturing, one is the OEM purchasing. So in the inventory, if you go there and then go to the day five. So if you go to the day five of the uh, EBIS now, and go there, you know how the bottom, what happens, the reasons for cyclic counting is there. So what we have created everything on this now. Fine, go there. So in this place, what happens? We have now created what happens, three items. Fine. CC1 of 51 quantities, and then CC2 of a lot 10 of two quantities, and then CC2 the same, I don't want to lot 20 of three quantities. And then CC3 is now 105, three items. So we have 51 plus 5 plus 3 are the quantities. So during cyclic counting process, what happens? I have counted 2 as 3, and then 2 as 3 as 4 now. Fine. So these are things which are done now. Fine. 3 is now counted as 4, and then 2 is counted as 3. So 2 plus 3 has now become 3 plus 4. So we have 7 on the CC2 now. And go and have a look at it now. Fine. We have 7 on CC2 now. <coughs> So we have seven on CC2. Fine. CC2 is now having seven quantities now. So this is the one. So uh, item is not explaining. I don't know why it's not coming. Fine. So it's uh, CC2 is seven. And then this one has been what happens. Uh, the serial number 102 is missing now. So 101 or 103 is only there. So we have two serial numbers. Now. So on which what happens? We are now going to perform what? Yeah, uh, what's called a uh, physical inventory now. Fine. So 47, 7 and 2 are the balances now. Fine. On which what happens? We'll now create a physical inventory. We'll close it now. Will now go and get a physical inventory. You go there, go to the steps. <clears throat> no, sorry. I'll now go to the what happens counting. And then I go to the physical inventory and then go to the physical inventory. So I'm counting physical inventory, physical inventory is navigation fine. So let me go and create a physical inventory. Click on it. So let me create a physical inventory. <laughs> so we'll be creating a physical inventory of this now. So let us now create a new physical inventory. Cyclic counting creation is very tough, whereas doing is easy. Here it is ultra. Here what happens? The creation is easy, but doing is very tough. Click on new now. So I'll not create a new physical inventory. Go there. I will also say P50 underscore. Uh, Rajesh, you can take up a prefix of what or as a RA or something like that because what happens, I have now allocated some prefixes for others now. So since you join late, what happens, whatever uh, two letter prefix you feel like, what happens, you can take it up and then you can start. I can say, you can say RA. Nobody would have taken RA. Otherwise, you just see if somebody has taken it, what happens, you, you choose one of the prefixes for your, all your lab, uh, lab practices. So I'll now say physical inventory, fine, PHY underscore INV. So take a copy of it now. <clears throat> and then click on the description and then paste it. And go there and then paste it. Fine, go there. Here, what happens since audit is repaired, what happens? You normally cannot have what happens out of tolerance. If it is out of tolerance, what happens? It will not get automatically adjusted. Fine. Normally it will not be allowed. Fine. Audit will now say bring everything to me. Fine. Approval is always required. Even if one is missing, he has to approve it. That is how this is not done. And then you'll be doing it for all the subunits. And then uh, so only in rare cases, what happens, you'll not go for a specific sub inventory. Otherwise, what happens, you'll not go for all sub inventory. So, commit by which what happens, the physical inventory is created. So creation is so easy. Whereas in cyclic counting, you'll see that what happens, there's so much of a problem is there while you're creating it now. Fine, go there. <clears throat> so now what happens in order? Now what happens, we have to take a snapshot. Now. Snapshot means what? You're going to freeze the physical inventory. The physical inventory gets freezed now. Fine, we have to freeze it because once when a snapshot is taken, what happens? No transactions are basically allowed because audit is sitting and then they are not going to count it. It will not take around two days or three days also sometimes, fine, because what happens? The physical inventory is now getting done. So during this period, what happens? You cannot perform any transactions. 
So what happens? Oracle feels that what happens? Freezing uh, real inventory will be very very tough because what happens? Your production will be hampered basically. So what they do is they will only logically freeze. If the audit insists that what happens? No transaction to be allowed. Then what happens? They will also physically also freeze. Fine. So we will not uh, run the physical uh, inventory. Can click on snapshot. So once in snapshot, what happens? The concurrent five two eight is not running. And then you can now have a look at it. Now fine, go there. If you have a look at it. So the concurrent is not going to run. It is basically called what happens a freezing of the inventory actually, but actually what happens really the inventory is not freezing. Right? So it is only a logical freezing, no physical freezing. You are allowed all transactions. But if the audit insists that what happens it has to be really freezed, then what happens the technical team has to remove. That has been commented out. Right? All the transaction stopping has been commented out by Oracle actually. So uh, what happens it allows, but if audit says no, then what happens the comment will be removed and then everything will be freezed actually. Sometimes what happens you give a big bribe to the auditor. What happens you will not say okay, whatever you want you do it, and then that way what happens you do it now. So close it now, <clears throat> and then well, now requerit. So once when you requerit, what happens it now says snapshot is completed, and then what happens the tags will be ready for the, what happens the process. I go to the query mode, and then I paste it now and go to the requerit now. And the requerit what happens you can now say the snapshot is completed, the date of completion this now find the tags are ready for declaration. So here. What happens unlike your uh, cyclic counting here what happens you will now allocate one tag for the what happens no control item and then one tag for every lot and then one tag for every serial number actually in the cyclic counting what happens uh, multiple serial numbers have been clubbed together in one tag where it is not possible for each and every serial number will be given one tag so you'll be having one here and then two three and then four and five so the system will be getting five tags actually so what happens click on the tags now i'm not going to create a tag now click on it I will not say starting tag number. I will not say 2001 now. Give a tap. So what happens? It now the final tag is 2005. So we can even have digit increments as per requirement. Some companies will not see if you have an odd number. What happens? You will be getting what happens? Some superstition will be there. So they would not like to have an odd number. So they will not start with 2002 and then what happens? They will not increment the last digit with two two numbers. So if you do that, what happens? It will be 2002, 2004, 2006, 2002, 2008. So there will not be the what happens? Odd numbers. Everything will be even numbers now. So you have the option of what generating the tag numbers in whichever way you want. Fine, we can even increment any digits as suddenly you require. And then click on generate by which what happens? The the tags are getting generated now. Fine for that. So now 2001 to 2005 is now generated. Now go to perform a count. Now. So close it now. <clears throat> you will now do what happens? Tag counts. So go there and then perform the tag counts over here now. Fine, double click on it. So we are now performing the tag counts now. <clears throat> Alright, Thomas is arrived. <clears throat> Come on, Thomas, where we are? You're late now. <laughs> okay, tag counts. Fine, double click on it. So we are now going to perform the tag count now. Fine, double click on it now. So here, what happens? I will now put the uh, count over here and then click on find now. I'm going to find it out. So once when I find it out, what happens? Put all existing tags, yes, now. So now we are able to see all these things now. Fine. Well, CC1 is now there, and then for which what happens, you can now see the quantity. And remember, uh, you cannot show the system quantity to the counters at all because the audit is sitting. Since the audit is sitting before the inventory, what happens, we cannot show it. So the person who has to count, he cannot see the system quantity at all. And there is no bad. And go there. Get on the detail now. This place, what happens, you can now see this one. So what happens, he has to enter whatever he has counted. So 47, let us say he is now entering at 45. Here, what happens? This is now what happens. The first lot, fine, go there. You can see what happens is lot 10, lot 20. So, lot 10 is now having three quantities. This is having four quantities. Let us say we are now counting it as what? As four and five. So, three and four is now counted as four and five now. Four and five. Okay, go there and, and this is all serial numbers. Fine. CC3 is a serial number. So, this is 101 serial number. Here, one. This is a 101 serial number. This is a 103 serial number now. Fine, go there. The one. So, I will now say 101 is present, but 103 is absent. And like what happens, there are plenty of tags. Sometimes audit will now say what happens, no need to count. What happens? We can even void some of them. We can even void something. Or what happens? We can even void all and then unvoid all. With these two buttons, what happens? You can now choose whatever you want to count actually. Fine. So there are two combinations by which whatever can do it now. Fine. So it all depends upon how fast you want to do it now. Fine. So if you say no void all, everything has to be counted. And then upon what happens, entry the count, what happens? No adjustments are basically processed. Fine, count is commit. So transaction is complete. So the physical inventory is now made. The count is now made. Now what happens? We have to ask the audit. It will be put before the audit to, to approve it. Right? The audit has to approve whatever counts you have entered. Right? Go there. Go close it now. So audit will come. So the approve adjustments will be available only for the auditor's responsibility. Right? They will not create a separate responsibility for them when they do it now. Others, the person who is entering the track counts will not be having the approve adjustments at all. 
So the similar way, what happens? We can even customize uh, the what's called the fusion application with what happens? Removing the approvals basically from the property users actually, and go there. So you go to this place, go to the approval adjustments, and then click on it, and then we are going to approve it. So I will now go there, P50, and then give a tap, and then click on Find Now. I'm going to find out. Click on Find Now. So you know, see. So audit has to either approve or reject. He will never sell it for recount at all. Only in cyclic counting, what happens? We have a recounting facility, whereas in a, in a physical inventory, there is no question of recount. So you know, say whatever the count, man has counted, he has to approve it or whatever. It is. Now here, what happens? Is the system quantity is now the snapshot quantity is found out, and then the missing quantity is what minus two. Here four is now plus one, plus one, and then here what happens? This is now minus one, and then there is no change in the first one. Likewise, it will show you all this. Uh, it will now even show you the what's called item details. All these things and information are available now. You can see the lot number. You can see the serial numbers. So the plus and minus adjustment quantity. So he has to take an action of either approve or reject. <clears throat> Let us say on one of the things he has not taken an action. So on the remaining he has approved it. Fine, go there. Do it. And upon approval again, adjustments are not processed. Fine. There in cycle counting upon approval, the adjustments gets processed here. It is not so. Fine, go there. Confidence coming. So it is not. Uh, and remember, one of them is uh, basically he has not taken any action. If he has not taken any action, what happens? You will not see what happens. I close it. And then what happens? You will not go to the physical inventories and then double click on it. And then you will not query it. Control F1, you will not query it. I go there. Here, what happens? I will not go to the tools and then I will not launch adjustments. Adjustments are launched separately. After the audit approval, we are going to launch it. You know, launch adjustments. And then what happens? The adjustment account will be given with the financials. I will not put some junk account over here. Now. And then go there, click on launch adjustments. This is going to fail because what happens? One of the uh, count he has not taken any action at all. If you go there and say, no, he has not taken any action. So it is now completed the warning actually. And then view the output, it will not clearly say what on the view log. View log, it will not clearly say that what happens? Adjustments are not processed because what happens? Uh, there are still uh, adjustments requiring approval in the physical inventory. So Oracle inventory has not posted any adjustments for this physical inventory. So if you go and then have a look at it, the stock. Will not show you the same stock and go to the online availability and then online quantity. And then if you make a check of it, it will be 47, <clears throat> then 7 and 2. So the stock levels will be the same. Fine. Nothing is possible. So 47 has now become 45, the 7 has now become 9, the 2 has become 1, but the adjustments are not been processed. So we go there, and then what happens? We will now ask the audit approve and go there, go to the counting. And then what happens? You go there, go to the physical inventory, and then go to the approve counts now. Fine. Go to the approve adjustments, fine. Go there. And then we will now put the word find over there. Give it up and then click on find now. So we are finding it out. So now what happens? You will now approve this also. Or let us say he is now rejecting it. So 47 has been counted as 45. He is rejecting it. He says that 47 will be definitely be there. He is not agreeing with the counter's quantity. The counter has counted as 40, 45, but he says no, I am rejecting it. So it will now keep that 47 only. And he feels that the counter has not counted properly or something like that. So because of which what happens, he is rejecting it. So the up, the uh, the audit has to take an action of either approve or reject. Then only what happens, we can post. If anything is none, what happens? Even if one of the tags is none, what happens? It will not process at all. Countless commit finds and all that. Now let us go and then launch the adjustments. You go to the physical inventory and then let us now launch the adjustments. You go, there. you go to the tools and then go to the launch adjustments. This time what happens, it will be all be processed. And then put a junk account over here. Fine. And then in reality, what happens, the financials will give you. So once you launch it, what happens, you can now see the adjustments will be processed. And we'll close it now. You'll now see, there will not be any yellow color at all. It will be running smoothly, and then that will be getting done. You can now see. It's not so the costing also has taken place. Now. So it's not completed. Now if you go and then see the physical stock, what happens, you can now see, go to the on-end availability, and then go to the on-end quantity. Now, what happens, you can now see the stock is getting adjusted. So 47 has been counted as 45, there is rejected. So 47 will be retained as a channel fine. Go there. 7 has now become 9, he has uploaded it. 2 has become 1, he has uploaded it. So this completes the process of physical inventory in e -business. Is it clear? Any Nana, can I ask a question? Yes, tell me. Tell me. Hello? Tell me, tell me. Yeah. So Nana, uh, to understand this the whole process, um, so we have to involve our internal auditors also, so that uh, yeah, internal auditor can in, be involved. But what happens? Whatever external auditor says, he's that's fine. Uh, external oh. auditor, the one who is going to certify your balance sheets and so what happens? That is final. Internal auditors can what happens? Uh, guide the external auditor in uh, what happens? Doing this, not fine. Uh, they will not say why the quantity is missing or something like that. Whatever you'll not ask. And the internal auditor will be giving an explanation to external auditor. So this is with the collaboration of the internal auditors and external auditors. Internal auditors are your own company auditors and so what happens. Uh, Correct. External auditor may not agree with whatever they give a justification. 
but if all depends upon the how much of a big pity you are giving it in a company what happens we used to give a 2 lakh 3 lakh rupees worth of pity <laughs> and so what happens that guy will never say anything at all <laughs> Okay, so now in in a reality, uh, in, someone in, will. In theory, what happens if you see external auditors, internal auditors only will help the external auditors. Right? They will not audit. Correct. They will not do anything other than that. Correct. In understanding your what happens, your way of working actually, they will. He lost so many questions for which what happens, the internal auditor will not come up immediately with that. Yeah. So, so my second question here, Nana, is that how we will count the. real inventory that is sitting in the warehouse someone will go there and no, no, give no, us the count every warehouse will be counted no each and okay. every warehouse will be counted on theory i'm telling again on theory fine and then you can even void certain things basically it will be all sub inventory fine every warehouse will be counted actually yeah because sometime maybe in the system you know your inventory is different or it's than the you know in the physical you know speaking what happens you have to count each and everything But okay practically it doesn't happen <clears throat> okay got it thank you any other questions on this physical inventory good that uh, yeah tell me another transactions are adjusted are recorded in material transactions Re the, the adjustments will be posted to the adjustment account actually okay the adjustment account so, is going now it will be posted to the adjustment account and then what about the financials will not take a report on how much was missing or how much is going to be excess and then they will not give it to the manager Okay, so if you go to the view material transaction, uh, this yeah, record yeah. should not be there, right? Yeah, this is what it is. If you go to the view material transaction, also you can see. Now, fine, go there. It's very good question. Fine, go there. Go to the transaction, then go to the middle transaction. Here also we can see all the adjustments over there. The physical inventory adjustments can be very well seen. Now, I'm not putting only today's date or uh, first of June. Fine, go there. You go there and see this now. If you go to the what's called, you go down and see this now. You can now see it's a physical uh, adjustment, inventory adjustments. All these things are posted as a transaction. Each and every transaction. This has done been on what happens on a cycle count, and then this is a re, the source type is physically in your view. You can now see all the things that what happens. You are uh, reasons and things. If you put anything, what happens? You can also record it. It is also cost protection. And remember, in uh, fusion, costing is separate. Often costing is done separately. But here, what happens? It is comp costing is implicit as far as EBS is concerned. As a man, the transactions are processed. What happens? It will be getting costed. Whereas in fusion, you have to push it into what happens? Uh, transfer it to costing model, and then then what happens? You have to cost it. Any other questions on the physical inventory? Good then. Fine. So we are now completed the accuracy. Now. So we are now completed the accuracy. So EBS analysis, cyclic counting, and physical inventory. Now we will now go to some funda subject. Now go to the funda. So what happens? You now begin with the item defining attribute. So what exactly is an item defining attribute? No, no. Are you showing the physical inventory fusion as well? Yeah, we are going to. Ah, oh, sorry, I have forgotten that. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I totally forgot on that. So we have to do the physical inventory infusion. Okay, no, okay. I thought. <laughs> okay, if I make any mistake, please, then and there, you correct me. I have to go and see the physical inventory infusion. No, we have to see the physical inventory infusion. No, so let us now see the physical inventory infusion. Go there and then. <laughs> So we'll now log in. My my login is P15. Now fine. Whatever I'm putting it, you have to put your numbers now basically. Fine. Oracle one two three, capital O, and then I log in. Now we are going to do the physical inventory on this now. Fine. Go. Click on the show my account. <clears throat> and then here, what about you go there? And then you go to the warehouse operations and go to the inventory now. Click on the inventory. So warehouse operations inventory. And then in the inventory, we have seen all the tabs now. <clears throat> fine, like what I'm saying. Now for the organization, fine. P five zero three is all. Fine, go there. The, the third org which we are doing now. Fine. And then what I'm saying. The results, the pick waves, the pick slips, the inventory, the shipments, everything has been completed. Now we are into the counts. In the counts also, what I'm saying. We are now completing the cyclic counting. Now we are going for physical inventory. And then you click on it. And then here what I'm saying. Go there. And then what I'm saying. Go and then click on manage physical inventory. So, so we are now going to create a physical inventory. Thank you for the manage physical inventory. So let us now give a plus and then create a physical inventory over there. Now click on plus. And then the inventory name is P50. Let's go P H Y. Let's go I N V. And go there. And now you take a copy of it. Now go there. Put in the description. <clears throat> and then what happens? You go there. It will be sub inventories. Will be normally all. Only, right? All. And then the date on which you go date is not going to be there. You exclude zero balances. Fine. Not necessarily fine. You have to even count the zero balance also. Dynamic tags are always allowed. Right? Then go up. Go down. Approvals is what approval. If out of tolerance, it will be always always no. Otherwise, what happens? We have a quantity level tolerance or the value level tolerance. Fine, everything is there. Fine, go there. All the options are available here. Fine. Tag type is default. Fine, go there. And then starting default tag, I will not say what happens. The 2001 now. Fine, go there. 
So you'll be generating five tags actually. Right? Here we have one option. Right? We can even what happens? Do the sorting now. First sequence is what sub inventory. Then afterwards locator. Afterwards item. Afterwards revision. Likewise, what happens? You cannot do it. And by which what happens? The tags gets allocated. So tag allocation can be what happens? Uh, prioritized based upon. So this option is not available in, uh, in cycle counting. This is available only in uh, physical inventory. And then this such option is not available in uh, EBS also. Right? The, gen the generation sequence how you want to do it. So in this way you can do it. <clears throat> you go there and then I look at the supplementary. Then afterwards, what happens? The locator item revision is coming. Fine. Whatever option you want, you can just do it. Click on save and close by which whatever the physical inventory gets created. So click on save and close. So, uh, so the physical inventory is now created. Now I go there. Now we have to take a snapshot. So in uh, in EBIS, in the infusion, what happens? The advantage is what you go to the actions, then keep on doing one by one every time. So first generate the physical inventory snapshot. Afterwards, keep on doing one by one. So that is the, that is the way. What happens? It's now guiding you all this thing. Come, click on the physical inventory snapshot. By which what happens? The concurrent will run now. It will not take a snapshot. So eight six zero concurrent is now running. Fine, go there. We will not have a look at it now. So you click on it and then go there. And then we will not click on it. We will now click on this navigator icon on the left hand side. And then here what happens? You go to the more now. And then there on the tools, you click on the schedule to process. On the tools schedule process, you go there. You can see now. So you can now see this process coming up now. <clears throat> So now what happens, you can now see the physical, this is not going to physically freeze it actually, it's a logical freezing actually, fine, the physical snapshot has been created. Now you go there, and then now, yeah, once when that is completed, what happens, you go to the actions, the remaining will be coming as such, no fine. So the remaining will come only when you make a research. Then only it will come now. After the snapshot, only the remaining activities are possible, you go there and then make a research. Now. As of now, what happens, if you see the bottom, what happens, the snapshot date is not coming, fine. Uh, once when you make a research, it won't say when it is completed. When click on search, it won't say when the snapshot was completed. It won't say it was Dynamic tags are a lot of time. So now it's not coming fine. Go to the actions and then first activity is complete, but now go and then generate the physical tags. Click on generate physical tags. So we are given the 2000 number now as a start number. So what happened? The concurrent is running for generating all the five tags. Fine. 861. You can now see this. What happens? You refresh it. You can now see the 861 concurrent running. So by which what happens? All the tags will be running as well. So once when it is completed, what happens? You can go for the next activity now. So it is the infusion. Uh, the the biggest advantage is what it will now guide you step by step. Busy. What you have to do next? And then click on it and again make a search of it now. Click on search. And then afterwards you go to the actions and then afterwards you are generated. Then what happens? Record the physical inventory tax. And go there. No record. Click on record physical inventory tax. So we are going to record it. So here what happens? The 2001 to 2005 is come The CC one is there. You can go there. Then CC1 count quantity. So 47 is there. Let me count as 45. Now. We can even void or unvoid depending upon the audit uh, audits recommendation actually. So CC2, fine. Uh, again, uh, uh, Thomas told me that what happens, there will be a plus mark, which what happens, you can now see the uh, what happens, uh, lot number now. But here, uh, serial number is visible, lot number is not visible. Here. There is no even plus mark. Come on, Thomas. What to do now? Fine. For this, <laughs> I don't know how to find out. The, you can go to the view and then go to the columns now. And go to the columns and then see whether any lot number is there or not. You know, see, click on the manage columns. If there is any lot number to be nice. There is no lot number. You cannot bring it to the right hand side also. Because I, I somehow or other, I don't like uh, the way in which the fusion is uh, basically doing anything. Like so here, what happens? I will not say. Uh, this it is there uh, below, I guess. Huh? Here? Below, below, the more record you have selected, if you come down, scroll down. Uh, scroll down. Oh, 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 oh. When you select it, what happens? It's not showing on the bottom, basically. Okay. <laughs> so if you select it, what happens? It's not showing on the bottom. There's say lot numbers. Good, good, good. <laughs> Previously, what happened? There's a one uh, arrow mark was there. So here, what happens is at least showing over here. Good, good, good. Fine. Lot number there. Good. So, Nana, can I ask a question? Tell me that, yeah. You can ask questions. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Um, so these are the items like showing and uh, and le left to that the tag number. Yeah. So let us say if we have 20 items mm -hmm. in the inventory mm -hmm. um, and if we are creating a tag, mm -hmm. it will create those 20 tags, right? Whatever the sequence we, we, exactly. we will start. For every lot, there will be a tag and every serial, there will be a tag. Fine. So okay. 50 items, it will be resulting in 50 tags or 60 tags. Okay. And on the other hand, that uh, uh, count quantity, yeah. you entered 45. Yeah. So this is the count we will get it from the inventory, like on hand quantity. And what we have counted, he has now shown that it is now forty five. So that we are entering in the system. Okay. So whatever the real count we have, we are entering here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Thank you. So now 
10 was having what? How much? Uh, four quantities. Now, uh, two and three has been counted as three and four. So three is now I'm counting it as four now. And then this is now four. And then what happens? I'm not counting it as five now. And then here, what happens? It now shows you the serial number also, fine, 1003. So this is missing. And then one out, one out, I now say zero. And then here is no one. That's it. We have recorded the counts now. So the person has recorded the counts, fine. Remember, audit will be sitting before them. And then what happens? We have to do everything before audit it. Click on save and close. Maybe what happens? Recording of the physical tax is now complete. Click on save and close. So, Nana, does zero means like there is no quantity for this item? Exactly. Zero means there is no quantity. <clears throat> and one means what it is present now. Serial numbers, you'll be putting either one or zero only. Right? Only for the lot numbers and other things or revision numbers, what happens? You'll be putting uh, the exact quantities. Right? 15 out of which 13 are there. <clears throat> now, having done this, what happens? You make a research now. Click on search. And again, search now. And searching it. And go there. And then yet, whatever the good actions, and then whatever this is not done, the record is not done. Right? You know, they will not ask the audit to approve. Right? Click on approve, approve physical inventory. Right? Go there. He's not going to approve it. So he will not take an action. Now, right? all the uh, what happens the accounts are shown as what uh, one. Uh, what happens the accounts are not shown as what this one now. So uh, one of them is missing here now. Fine, right? go there. So CC two. What happens? It is not. What happens? The snapshot quantity is one. Account quantity is one. He is not saying approve. He is not approving it. And then second one, what happens? You can even reject it also. Go there. Now 47 is now counted as 45. You go there and then show it as what happens. You know, approve or reject also. And then here, what happens? It is not, uh, this is now three. Again, CC2. Fine. I don't know why it's not coming in zigzag fashion. You go there. You select it and here, what happens? You go there. Three is now counted as four now. He's approving it. And then here, what happens? The one which is there on the, what happens? The city number, fine. Go there. You, you, the bottom, I think it will be showing you the city number. So Serial number has to be shown. The serial number is 103. And go there. 103 is present. Uh, 103 has been counted as zero. What happens? It is not coming as present. But uh, the count is exactly the same for the other serial number. It is not coming. I don't know why. The 101 is there. But there is no difference at all. So that means what? It doesn't need an approval, it seems. So uh, 101 is there. And then uh, for this, maybe if uh, any quantity is not mismatching, then audit approval is not required. Maybe. I'm not sure about it. The law is working actually. So all these things are approved. Now what happens? You have to save and close. And then what happens? You have to do it now. It's not change the status to approve now. Click on save and close. So click on save and close. So approve physical inventory adjustments. He's going to approve it. Click on save and close. He's not approving it. So it's now approved now. So once upon approval, what happens? The adjustments will not be processed. And then what happens? You have to process the approvals. Or process the adjustments actually separately. And go there. And then click on find now. Search for it now. Now there and go there. Go to the actions, and then here what happens after that? What happens? We have to approve, we have to post it also. And then finally, what happens? We can even purge the physical inventory itself. So, what happens? Your records, your database will be, you will be taking a backup, and then afterwards, you'll not purge it. So, you'll go there and then post the physical inventory adjustments. So, by which, what happens? It'll be done. And go there. Adjustment date is okay. Then click on okay. <clears throat> and then now, adjustments of process 962 is now running. Fine, go there. And then click on the monitor process and see this now is now running. So, once when it's run, what happens? Once it's completed. What happens? You can go and then see the stock over there. Fine, go there. Go to the next tab region and then what happens? Uh, put E and then remember only for the first time or uh, the first time you had to fill the full URL and then afterwards what happens? Up to com is sufficient now. Go there. <coughs> it will be coming and then let us now go there. Click on it and then you go to the what's called your warehouse operation. Then go to the inventory now. You go to the warehouse operation the inventory and then have a look at the stock now. Fine. We are in the P503 stock. There is only three items that are there in this one. So if you click on search, blank search, if you make it, what happens? It will not show all the contest. So 47 has been adjusted to 45, and then what happens? Seven has now become nine, and then one through two has now become one. So this completes what happens to your physical inventory. If you expand it, it will not show you the what happens organization and then expand it, it will not show you lot wise also. Expand it, expand it. So lot 10 is having four, and then lot 20 is having five. And then here also serial numbers it will not show you. Click on expand it, it will not show serial numbers. So you know, the organization thing click on it now. And then there's a sub inventory if you expand it. What happens? It doesn't show anything. The bottom, what happens, it will not show the serial numbers. If you go to the serial number details, what happens? It will show you the serial numbers. In fact, what happens in our company? Uh, uh, the what happens? The transactions are not allowed. Sometimes the audit will not say, "Please uh, freeze all the transactions." But what we do is we open up the back gate, and then there happens there will be a security there, and then we'll be keeping a notebook also. And then if there is anything urgently required during two days, what happens? We'll not draw, and then we'll not write on the notebook. The counters who are going inside counting it, what happens? Whatever has been issued, they will now add it up and then they will now show it to the audit. So that way we used to do it now. 
because some auditors will be strict and so what happens uh, uh, we will not allow him to go and then walk into the inventory at all <laughs> they will be given so much of a food mela everything will be there and then what happens uh, uh, we will now ask all of our lady staff to what happens uh, come and sit behind him and then chat I mean, all sorts of uh, <laughs> jig jack things we'll be doing it now. <laughs> so by which what happens, we will even issue the items and then what happens, that is the way we used to do it in his path industries. <laughs> so company to company, it varies actually, but, uh, the way in which you deal the physical inventory. Uh, Nana, are you there? Uh, the option for logical and physical freezing, uh, yeah. wait. Where is, where is, where is, where is, actually, by Oracle by default does not freeze you, freeze you physically. And then if the okay. audit insists that what happens, no transactions are allowed, what happens, we have to ask the technical team to correct it. So in technical, okay. what happens in EBUS, we can very well do it now. And I, here, what happens, there is no control at all. Can we at least, can we see that in EBUS? Uh... EBUS also, I don't know. Fine, only you have to ask okay. the technical team. Fine. Technical team okay. will, 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 will go to the back end and then what happens, they will remove the comment. It gets commented out. So the commenting okay. portion, what happens, they will not remove it and then they will do it now in the company. But uh, I'm not aware of how they do it actually. Okay. Here, what happens, uh, the entire thing is now with the, uh, the help of the Oracle. Right? Because the technical database, the database tables cannot be modified by technical at all. Okay. So, I don't know how it is being done. That they have to discuss. And if you raise the SR, Oracle will immediately tell you about how to do that. Maybe some uh, hints they will now give it to technical for the now what happens from release 13 onwards, what happens, uh, we are now having an on-premise instance also. And so what happens, uh, now technical have got a full grip on the entire database. Not only a cloud. On-premise uh, And even in cloud also, what happens, they are opening up many, many arenas for the technical to what happens, modify now. Fine, now it's now coming up gradually. So if you attend a technical training, they will not tell you about what exactly they can do, a backend and then uh, what not, what, what they can do, what, what is not possible, everything they can do. Apps to Fusion is the best uh, institute for uh, conducting a technical training. Actually, you can even, uh, go on and join there, and then uh, they will give you plenty of information. As such. Oh, okay. I have even uploaded one of the what happens the, the DF of descriptive flux fields in my uh, channel Anantanana. When, uh, how the DF ops are being configured. Their uh, way of presentation is also very professional, and very good. but they are very expensive. They are charging around eight hundred, nine hundred dollars US dollars actually. So much of the money they are charging them. <clears throat> that is the only problem. <laughs> Otherwise, what happens? Their uh, trading is uh, uh, it is not affordable. Basically, that's the only thing. And everybody cannot think of it. Good. Then fine. This completes the physical inventory in uh, what happens uh, in. Uh, no, no. Can I ask you one question on the? There is only you can you need not have, you can ask any time whenever you want now. Yeah. yeah. So no, no. Uh, see, uh, we have completed the physical inventory and we check the quantity as well. After the approval, those quantities got adjusted. But what is the accounting entries that where we can go and see the adjustment? Of Here in Fusion, what happens? We have to transfer transactions to costing. So only when you transfer the transactions to costing, it will get costed. Here, what happens? It gets costed automatically. See here, what happens? Upon completion, everything is getting costed in EBS. Here, what happens? We have to push it into costing module. Then only what happens? It will get costed. So that you can see my previous videos. What happens? It will all be explained. There. The costing. Okay, so we are not transferring the transaction to costing uh, module in Fusion? Transfer, transfer transactions to inventory from, from, from inventory to costing has been done, and then afterwards, you have to perform the costing of that. Costing has got setups also, everything is explained in the previous video. Okay. Okay. Uh, at, at least if you can outline the process, like uh, uh, what you process? Just go through the record. Everything is now fully explained on the costing videos. Oh, in the in the previous video? Okay, no problem. Go, the, go through the previous videos. It will be explaining about how to do the setups of the costing. Costing setups are really very tough, actually. It has been enhanced also. And then what happens here? If items are not costed, remember, transfer orders will not work. Fine. If anybody has succeeded in transfer orders in this group, if anybody has succeeded, I think nobody has uh, reached that stage as far as practice is concerned. Fine, please do it. And then again, I'm insisting upon everybody to what happens, uh, practice on their own structure only. Fine, do not practice directly on my structure because mine is already set. And then what happens if you do it, it will work. And then uh, you will now feel, okay, yeah, I have done it. And then when you go to the field, and then you will now find some mistakes here and there. And then you will now you will cry. Fine, because I've seen many students what happens, approaching me, say, this is not working, that is not working. Very silly mistakes. They in a, in a professional, in your uh, in your production instance, if you make mistakes like this, what happens? We have to discard those data. And then what happens? There will be so much of a junk there. 
so try to be very professional on the on the what happens on the customers instance now fine do not populate any junk data right? you have to have it as a you, you, that must be coming as a habit for you right? so do the thing itself and then what happens do each and every setups and then what happens try to check it up what happens you'll be having a look and feel of everything right? by watching alone is not sufficient when you put your hand then what happens it will go into your heart again and again repeating because i have seen many guys one girl was virtually trying for me because she is studying a california instance and then i was in the temple actually like there was no phone at all fine is already in a silent mode fine she was having a big problem with the customer actually fine some silly mistakes she has made so likewise what happens will be happening as well <coughs> so you can contact me on my phone number from 3rd of july i will be reaching madras on 3rd july otherwise what happens my whatsapp number is always there thank you <coughs> Let's set point. We go there. Go for the inventory fundas now. So we are going to begin item defining attributes. I will not explain what exactly is now item defining attributes. So here, what happens? Go there. And then whenever you have completed your talk, what happens? Please mute your mic now. I am muting all of you. So have a habit of muting. Go to the editor. When the master comes. So in EBS, what happens? We have sixteen tab regions. Fine. That has been reduced to around six or seven. Fine. They have been clubbed together. I like work in process, and then what happens? Your manufacturing, <clears throat> your uh, whip is there, and then your costing is there. Fine, other something. The, all the relevant relevant ones have been clubbed together. Fine, like this has been done. If you go to the inventory, what happens? The first attribute is called the item inventory. Item. If this is not enabled, we cannot do anything on the inventory at all. Like what happens? We cannot do the serial control, we cannot do the lot control, revision control, location control, nothing at all. So this is basically a gateway attribute actually. So if this gateway is not on, what happens? We cannot do anything at all in the inventory. So this is the inventory gateway attribute. So if you go there and then we have one document on this now. So one inventory extracts is there. If I go there on day five, inventory day five, what happens? We have an inventory extracts now. Fine against DBS documentation, inventory day five. You have one inventory extracts now. Fine, go there. Double click on it now. So here, what happens? You know, this is the functional area. So every functional area will be defined by one or more item defining attributes. Fine, this is an inventory item. So for purchasing, what happens? We have there are two gateways are there. One is what purchased. Fine, this is one. So if you go there and then see this map and go to the purchase map and go there. So the first one is a gateway, and then in the order management, what happens if you go there and then see this map and go to the order management? <clears throat> so you go there, go to the order management. Here, what happens? The internal order. There is another gateway. So that is for internal requisition. This is for IR IS four. This is for IR IS four. And go there. So there are two such gateways are there. Remember, IR IS four is now come in fusion as IR T O. Internal requisition transfer orders. It has now come from release thirteen now. Fine, I made to work on it now. Fine. So once when I have an access to release thirteen, what happens? I will be working, and then I will now make what happens a documentation for IRTO. Fine. IRTO is not available in release twelve. We are working on it. So it is a, it has now come in release thirteen now. Fine. So we will wait for it. <coughs> and already Anita has shared a document now. Anita has already given a document on uh, what happens IRTO. Fine. Go through that, and then we only have to practice it. Fine. And there are some extra setups when compared to the transfer orders. No, fine. Just have a look at it now. Fine. There, what happens? The transit. Uh, what happens? Your distance also is mandatory. <clears throat> so once when you are giving two transit times, what happens? We normally enable it, and then what happens? Leave it as such. No, fine. But distance in kilometers as well as or kilometers or meters or whatever it is, miles or whatever it is, along with the amount, value also is mandatory. That is what it is written there. So just follow that. <clears throat> Don't ask any question. What the distance is going to do? All these things. No, fine. So that has been configured like this, and so what happens? You have to follow extract. So watch the IRTO document given by Anita, and then that will be what happens helping you. Hey Rajesh, I have not forwarded because I have been forwarded separately. I will now forward it to you. Okay. IRTO document I will now forward it to you separately. Okay, thank you. So what happens? The MS MRP is now represented by MRP planning method. The cost management is now enabled by. So these are all the what happens? The functional areas. Now the functional areas have been enhanced as far as what happens? The fusion is concerned. So they have even brought in more functional areas for other modules, like like uh, what happens uh, the product accounting and then a product information system like this. What happens they have added more. So when, as and when you learn the modules, what happens you will understand the functional area item defining attributes. Fine. Those modules, whenever you are learning it, what happens they will not teach you which are all the item defining attributes. So this is the item defining attributes. And then what happens? I will now show you this fusion also. Fine, it's all the same thing. Fine, for the inventory item and the purchase item, all this costing enabled, all these things are there. We will now I will now show you fusion later. Then afterwards, next is what you go there and then see the what happens your status attributes. The status attributes provide a definite functionality. Fine, they provide a functionality to the item. Fine, go there and see this one. Here, what happens? It goes there and then here the status attributes. The stockable. If you enable it, what happens? It allows you to stock the item in an asset sub inventory. It allows you to stock the item in an asset sub inventory. 
and then there must be a corresponding IDA. Right? Every status attribute will be having IDA. Right? So this is the IDA of this. If this IDA is enabled, then only what happens? Stockable is enabled. If this is not enabled, we cannot do the stockable at all. I'll show you. I'll go there. So here, what happens? I go to the inventory now. Uh, here, what happens? Inventory is not enabled. The gateway is not on. Right? If you try to enable it, what happens? It will not say cheapo. I will not do it. Right? It must be inventory item. So, otherwise, an item is an inventory item, what happens? It will not be possible. So, there are two types of items are there. One is an inventory item and one is a non-inventory item. Like what happens? I am going to buy a boiler or a turbine for the plant actually. Fine. They will never come into the sub-inventory at all. They will be, what happens? They are coming and then they will be installed on the shop floor itself. So, they are all called, what happens? Enterprise assets now. Fine. So, enterprise assets are all boiler, turbine, your lathe machine are all enterprise assets. Now. And then apart from that, what happens? You have fixed assets like land, building, machinery, everything is all fixed assets. So both the fixed assets as well as enterprise assets are non-inventory items. So they will be covered in the respective modules. No fine go there. So this inventory, this training on inventory will not cover, which is inventory item. So is what is. So you go there and then enable the inventory. Fine, go there. I will know what happens. I remove this now. Fine, go there. Remove this now. <clears throat> Here it is not possible. Fine, go there. So this is what is no set by sets value. Again, this is this functionality has not come. I already explained you on this now. Fine. So that functionality is not there. You go there. Now, what happens? If it is not stockable, I cannot make a transaction. When you click on transaction, it's not possible. So item must be stockable to make it as transactable. So that, that sort of what is called yeah, interlock has been provided now. So you won't make any mistakes at all. There are so many interlocks that are available here. And one and six. So the interlocks are almost similar to what we have in Ebus now. Fine, go there. So here, these are all the dependencies now. Attribute dependent. Stock attribute stockable must be set to no if inventory is set to no. Transactable must be set to no if what happens stockable is set to no. Like what happens, there are so many interdependencies. And then what happens, there are relationship between the item attributes also. If this is no n, what happens, this has to have a value. Like, what happens, like this, what happens, there are some uh, required attributes. Now, fine, what is required? And then afterwards, what happens, we have interdependent attributes. So even if you go through the document of fusion, what happens, it will be giving you all these things. It is almost similar to what we have in uh, ebiz which are updatable. All these things are available in your, uh, what happens, your uh, user guides. And implementation guides of the event. <clears throat> so all these things are almost same. Fine, there is not much of a difference. As well. But what happens? We work on a template basis, and so what happens? We don't set the attributes directly manually. So when you apply a template, automatically everything gets set as such. Well. So in in Fusion, what happens in Ebus? We have around ten status attributes are there. So here I have in, I meant only eight. Now actually, it's a very old document. So what happens in R12? They have clubbed both process manufacturing as well as discrete manufacturing together. So what happens? The, the process enabled and then the recipe enabled are two more attributes which have been added over here. So there are 10 status attributes. So in Fusion also we have this. We'll now have a look at it now and go there in the Fusion. So we'll now go to the home and then click on the product management. <coughs> so you go there, go to the product management and then go to the product information management now. So there, what happens? When you go and then create an item now. And go there, you know, go there, open up an item now, go there. We'll now open up an existing item and then have a look at it now. So click on it and then go for browse items now. Fine. Click on the task carousel and then go to the browse items now. So once when you go to the browse items, what happens? You can now see this. I will now give a blank query on this one. <clears throat> and then I will now push this column over here and go there. Fine. I will now open up one of the items and then have a look at it now. <clears throat> and then go to the specifications and then the specifications, what happens? You can now see around seven such things are coming up. And then go there and have a look at it. So here, what happens if you go to the inventory? What happens? The first is an item defining attribute, ID. So go there. So inventory item is this. stockable and then transactable or basically status attributes. But there is no more indi no indication that it is an item defining attribute is a status attribute like that. No, there is no indication. So you must know only these things. So if you go to the purchasing, what happens? You can now see the IDA coming up now. IDA is the first one. And then what happens? Purchasable is a transactable attribute. Fine. It's a stock is a is a status attribute. This is the item defining attribute. So likewise, what happens? We have some functionality also on, on these things now. Fine. Like if we go to the order management, what happens? Uh, if customer orders, if IDA is enabled, what happens? Uh, we can now populate the item on a price list. Now. And then what happens? Only with the customer orders enabled, then only what happens? We can put the item on the sales order. So this facilitates population of an item on a price list. This facilitates population of an item on a sales order. So some additional functionality have been added to this on some other areas basically. So when you learn that module, what happens? It will be teaching you everything fully. No? So this Anna, is I have, a, I have a couple of questions. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Yeah, uh, uh, the purchased and purchasable, right? Yeah. If, if we can go back to the yeah. purchasing, no? the invent, purchasing one. Purchased and yeah. yeah. So, so can we can we uh, like uh, 
change it interchangeably like let us say uh, this is the purchased item but uh, i want to set uh, purchasable now can we do that kind of combination mm -hmm. or it's always yes yes purchased is like what happens your passport now fine purchasable is like a visa fine so okay, unless you have a passport you cannot have a visa and if you have a visa if you have no passport what happens you cannot do it no fine so both the things must be yes then only what happens you can do that what happens uh, purchasing of an item actually okay got if it purchasing is yes what happens uh, purchase orders cannot be created but what happens we can do the taxation and then we can do something else fine negotiations can be done fine sourcing can be done no? fine negotiations basically are sourcing but purchase orders cannot be created so the gateway attribute is on but what happens a uh, purchase requisitions and purchase orders cannot be created if this is not but other related activities can be done over there so the so many things which you can set up because the gateway is on so can we do like this like let us say i purchase this item yeah but uh, in future i don't want to do any purchases from that time onwards what happens when you make it as no you cannot purchase it whatever is purchased right. is purchased right whatever okay, got it. that time onwards what happens it will yeah. be a okay another question on asset yeah so 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 asset flow in in infusion is that let us say if i am procuring some asset right let us say let us say something like a laptop okay <clears throat> and i procure the laptop okay and uh, and what would what could be the flow like like here like i will put that uh, item attribute is, asset uh, is not at all uh, what happens uh, here in ebiz whether see we know what happens uh, we have asset management you know right this is a tab right. where here what happens is not having any tab region at all when that has been removed from you when asset has been removed when that you have to go and see the fixed assets module so in the ebiz we have an asset management that also i don't know how it's working actually and is also when you have rebuildable assets and other things are there basically right again what happens like this so you are saying in fusion there is no asset uh, functionality yeah, right what, now? what happens it is not on the item attribute now when they have removed it from the item attribute actually asset is no more an item attribute actually oh okay only seven are there and then even what happens if you go to the manufacturing what happens the multiple have been clubbed together actually in the manufacturing itself what happens you can see the costing is also clubbed if you go to the manufacturing bomb this item structure is bomb and then this is the costing this is manufacturing like what happens they put the multiple things into one and then some of them have been removed now right whatever they feel it's not required on an item attribute they have removed it so let us say if we want to uh, buy some asset so how, how the flow will work in fusion then no idea at all <laughs> okay so you have to talk to a guy who knows fixed assets anybody in this team who knows fixed assets no i know fixed asset very good fine but uh, but but usually you know like uh, in uh, in ebs world what we do is we will procure that item we create a po mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then we receive that inventory and then we will move that one to the then you will retire the asset structure fine go there fine. yeah and move to the fixed asset you know okay. yeah. i don't know who yet. even i i don't know both in ebs as well as in fusion <laughs> okay no no worries anybody okay. has got any idea what happens you can even uh, give a private chat to what happens rajesh that what happens how to do that now fine whether if they have any documents also they can even help him out in what happens doing the fixed assets part of it uh, if since it is not available in the item attribute right you go there right so you go there and then go for the next one now fine okay so this is it is the course then asset item and expense item fine okay now uh, normally what happens uh, i will not say uh, i am not going to build a monitor now fine monitor needs a picture tube a motherboard and then 10 screws now the screw is costing 10 paise now now tell me the screw is an asset item or an expense item anybody fine <clears throat> to the screw is an asset item or an expense item the the picture tube is now costing me 700 rupees and then what happens the the, uh, the motherboard is costing 500 rupees and then i am now deploying a labor and then it is going to cost me around 100 rupees now fine let us say the total cost of manufacturing is what 1600 plus the 10 screws is costed 100 rupees so the total cost of manufacturing has now come to 1600 now so normally what you do is whenever an item is of a low value what happens we will not make it as an asset item it be an expense item now tell me i am now asking a generic question the screw is an asset item or an expense item anybody can answer this now okay since nobody has answered i will not tell you fine screw uh, by any item by nature it is not asset or expense it is by usage it becomes asset and expense so in a monitor manufacturing company screw is now going part of this monitor actually so 1600 plus 1 is 1601 if you make it as asset item in that case what happens they will know the pro, the purpose of costing is what you have to derive the selling price actually so the selling price will be cost price plus a margin or a percentage you know add it and then you know decide the selling price So to design the selling price, costing is very important. 
So here, what happens? 1,600 plus 20 percent margin, or 1,601 and the 20 percent margin is almost same. And then what happens? Let us say it is now arriving at 1,800 or something. The marketing department now price it at 1,799. Or if what happens? It is now sold at 1,750 in the market. They will now put it at 1,749. So the marketing department will now price the product with what happens with the cost price as a guideline. Actually, they will now reduce. They will never reduce the sale price below the cost price. Right? So, but what happens? They will also do some jugglery, and then if the some person is asking for some ten percent discount, and then they will now say, if you are buying hundred monitors, okay, I will now give it to you. So, for a large volume of sales, what happens? They will now give extra discounts, but they will always keep in mind what happens. What is the cost price? So that is called margin. The margin earned is very very important. And then what happens if the margin goes below a certain percentage? What happens? They cannot even sell it at all. So here, what happens? The screw which is now being used for manufacturing. Which is now contributing to a very low cost, it will be considered as expensive. Whereas in a screw manufacturing company, what happens? That is the output, that is the finished good. And so what happens? That will be an asset item. So based upon the usage, what happens? You make the item as an asset or expense and not by what happens by simply by an item name, what happens? You cannot say. So in a screw manufacturing industry, what happens? It is an asset item. Whereas in a screw usage company, it is an expense item. What you know? So we have one document on this now. I go there. We have one, uh, we go back. So fusion inventory, and here what happens? We have one asset expense item. No point. Asset expense items is no point. Double unit. They no point. So there are two attributes which makes an item as an asset item. That is true in it. In EBS also, I go there. So here what happens? I will now make these two attributes on. The inventory item must be on as well as the inventory asset value is on. If these two attributes are on, what happens? The item becomes an asset item. You go there and see is no point. In the inventory, what happens? The ID, the item defining attribute must be on. And then in the costing area, what happens? The inventory asset value must be on. So here also, what happens? We have the same thing now. Go there. So if you go to the manufacturing area, and go there. In the manufacturing area, I'll have it. This is not inventory asset value. So if this is also on, and then in the inventory, what happens? If you have this inventory item on, this is an asset item. And go there. An asset item. And then otherwise, what happens? It will be an expense item. And then when you transact it to your sub-inventory, which is quantity tracked as well as asset sub-inventory, this transaction is known as asset into asset. So these are the things which comes under this classification of and raw materials, sub-assemblies, and then what happens finished goods. So this is one type of a transaction of and that asset into an asset. Then what happens if you do the same thing onto an expense sub-inventory? If an asset sub-inventory is off, what happens? It becomes an expense sub-inventory. And so what happens? These things are all called asset into so asset item is a kerosene and then issued to the maintenance sub-inventory. So when you are issuing the assets, uh, kerosene, if it is issued to a furnace, what happens? It will be asset into asset, and then if it is issued to a maintenance subunit, it will be an asset into expense. So this is the second type of transaction. Of the third type of item itself is an expense item, and then in this industry, you have made it as an expense item. And then what happens? You are not transacting assets, so it's called expense into asset. The fourth one is what? It's called expense into an expense subunit. These are examples with Examples are being given. And the fifth one is what? Is a non-tracked one. So we are now seen on the RCN par replenishments. So there you can see what happens. You'll be uh, doing it on a, what happens straight away onto an, a non-tracked expense. And then if inventory is off, and then if this is on, this is known as a fixed assets or enterprise assets. Right? If the inventory attribute is on, but as inventory asset value is off, this is known as what? Fixed assets or enterprise assets. Now, fine. These are all the examples now. And then if both of them are on, it is a service item. Like welding, special cutting games, etc. are all service items. So this way, what happens? You define whether item is an asset item or an expense item. So there are five transactions which are available for asset into an asset, asset into an expense, expense into an asset, expense into an expense, and then expense into a non-tracked expense. Expense into a non-tracked expense. So this completes the discussion on asset and expense item. So Nana, it means in fusion we can uh, we can track the asset items as well as uh, yes, exactly. everything can be so Okay. What happens as long as the quantity track is enabled? If the quantity track is not enabled, what happens? We cannot track it. So let us say in this place, if what happens if asset subunity the quantity track is off means what? We cannot do it. As long as the quantity track is on, we can track the quantity. If quantity track is off, what happens? We cannot do it. That is called a non-tracked sub-inventory for which what happens, you can now listen to the previous videos about how we are replenishing a non-tracked sub-inventory. For example, a stationary shop. So the stationary shop will be having, let us say, 50 reams of paper. Let us say, somebody is coming and then drawing it. We will not make an issue at all. Because what happens, there are low-cost items, no issues there. So the stock will now keep on diminishing. And over a period of time, what happens, the stock will not be there at all. So such sub-inventories will not even show the stock at all. So if the quantity track is off, what happens? It will not show the stock at all to the management. How much is there? How much of paper is there? So how to replenish that 
what happens everything has been explained in the previous videos you can just move on this so this is on this now fan go there you go for the next topic so now there is a thing called nettable fine nettable is the thing and go there if you go on them see on this what happens submit it fine close it now you go there go to sos now fine go there sos and then enter now so in this place if you go on them see this fine control f1 what happens you now see the submit it now fine go there go there go there if it is nettable now <clears throat> fine nettable if this is on that means what you are keeping the item in a very orderly fashion let us say i am not going to keep let us say uh, some pencils now some thousand pencils i am keeping it and if some user department wanted me to issue thousand pencils i can very well issue it because what happens they are all nettable but if you are keeping it in a shabby manner what happens if you go on and try to find out the thousand you will not get only 900 in the another 100 we don't know in which corner it is lying you have to keep on go on and search 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 so you won't be getting it so such sub inventories are not nettable if a sub inventory is not nettable what happens the planning central will not give any will not consider the stock at all so only nettable sub inventories are considered with the planning engineer so you have to make it as nettable otherwise what happens if it is not nettable the inventory in charge has to tell the management about why it is not nettable like why he is keeping it in a shabby manner because sometimes what happens it's not possible for him to ma maintain the stocks also he will know your explanation then be removed so the planning engine will not consider the stocks for what happens it's a demand supply balancing logic so this is only nettable not going to that so here what happens depreciable so let us say when you keep kerosene or petrol on your inventory what happens over a period of time it will now evaporate so once when it is evaporated we can very well claim depreciation but what happens government of india has now put a clear what happens instruction that what happens the humidity must be what happens uh, uh, must be uh, less than 50 80% and then what happens the moisture content this much and then what happens your temperature must be this thing and there are so many conditions of that and then the the sub inventories must be maintained on those conditions if you are mentioning it what happens the depreciable can be made on so once when you make the depreciable on what happens the depreciable is on then what happens the financial team will now claim for depreciation for all the stocks which are evaporable with so in the balance sheet what happens they will now say what happens this item was lying for this much of a time for which what happens this much of a depreciation is allowed legally so depreciation will be taken by them only when this is on and then for putting it on what happens we have to meet all the what happens the statutory requirements of the corporation so this is the depreciation on and then similarly what about the quantity track I mean, the quantity track then only can see this otherwise you cannot see this and then we have seen one more thing called par level planning fine include in atp is basically used by what happens your order management actually fine so the available to promise so once and learn order management i will not teach you about this no fine uh, whereas this part will be taught by ebiz in the allow reservations fine if you reserve it what happens the item gets reserved and then what happens it will not be allowed for anything and then how to uh, unreserve it everything is explained in the ebiz order management actually you can see this. and then this is a uh, lpn control is for uh, warehouse management system fine like you know discuss with tushar tushar is an expert on uh, wms now fine so it is basically lpn control and then enable cartonization is also what happens it is uh, done by another some other module the par level planning we have already seen it so bulk pick is basically possible fine where what happens uh, you are now stocking uh, the bolts nuts and washers so there what happens uh, the people will now go there and then what happens put the hand and then they will not take it up and whatever comes in fine they are all bulk pick and so what happens it will be So likewise, what happens? There are so many such subunits there. Whereas in fusion, what happens is there is not having this much of a setup actually. Fine, the number of uh, what happens setups doesn't come down as far as fusion is concerned. Now attribute groups. Now. Fine, in fusion, in 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 EBS, what happens? We have around sixteen groups of attributes now. Fine, here what happens? We have got around six or seven. Now. So there is an attribute groups now. Status codes. This has been enhanced in fusion. Fine, status codes have been enhanced in fusion. Fine, we'll go there and see how it works. So we know how all about the status codes. No problem. Go there. Go to the setups. And then go to the items. And then go to the status codes. So if you see the status codes over here now, and go there, there are ten status attributes are only mixed in one status code. Active means what? All the ten status attributes are attribute on now. Go down arrow. If it is a concept, bomb is on. The remaining is not on. And go down. So design means what? Bomb, stockable, and transactable. Law. So what infusion? What they did is the status code not only have ten attributes or the status attributes, but apart from that, what happens? They have got some you know, fifteen or more. around 25 attributes have been clubbed into one status attributes that is nicely done so that what happens the moment you apply status what happens those attributes are set to either on or off so now see this now fine that so now how about the status codes in fusion <coughs> click on it and then go to the setup and maintenance now so in the setup and maintenance what happens you go there and how about it now fine go there let's go to manage percentage status percentage 
If it is active, what happens? You cannot see, you won't find oh, not only 10, no, fine. There are more attributes have been clubbed together. Very nice data. Fine, around 20, 25 attributes are there. Fine, there. So all these things have been clubbed together. So we can set up this no or yes, no, depending upon this. We can even create our own status code. Fine, you know, status code can be created. And that can be applied on the template actually. In the template, what happens? Which which status code you will apply? So we can wait now. So that what happens by this, the things gets around 25 attributes are getting set in one go. Fine. So that what happens, it'll be easy for you to. So there's an enhancement when compared to EBIS basically. Item types. Here what happens, we can even create our own item types actually. Fine, go there. Let us now create our own item. Fine, I'll cancel it. And then we can now populate on the manage item types. So manage item types. PYP yourself. So let me create my own type also. This is only for information purposes. Item types are only for information purposes. It doesn't have any functionality as well. click on plus one. It's again a lookup code actually. I click on plus one. I will now have big one item. And go the lookup code. It is a P50. It is a purchased item. I'm not creating it now. So let me take copy of it now. Take copy of it. And then put in the display sequence. I must say some sequence is not there. No sequence is not there. Meaning is what? No, put paste it over here. Click on the description. Paste it over here. And then we must save it. That's it. So we can even create whatever types you want for your end client. And then accordingly, whatever we can populate it. And then click on save and close now. And then we can now populate the item type on our what happens on our template actually. So when you create a new item, what happens? That will be coming. Fine. Click on it now. We will now go and then populate our item. Fine. Go there. You go to manage underscore item status is not fine. Item underscore item class. So there, what happens? We'll go there. Manage item class is the, is the one. So click on the manage item class, and then we'll now go to the root item class, and then here, what happens? You go there, select, and then click on edit now. So on our template, let me put the item class. Go I go to the templates on this now. I click on the templates, and then let me query my template now. Fine, go there. Go to the query mode. I go to the uh, query example mode, and then let me query my template now. Fine, go there. P50. I'm going to query it now. Fine, enter. So there, what happens? I will not change the item type of it. And select it, and then here, what happens? User item type is what? It drop it down. I will now choose the P50. So this is the one. So I can save it. So what happens next time when you apply this template, what happens? This item type will be coming as this. <clears throat> us. Got it now. So click on save and close by which what happens? The template is now saved. My item type will be coming. So only for information purposes, actually. It doesn't have any functionality as Item relationships will be coming to you a bit later. Now find the, again a complex topic. Now find whether I will not come to it a bit now. So the next one is units of measures. And again, it's a very complex topic. Actually. This is the toughest topic of uh, inventory actually fine so tomorrow we are going to take it up now so all of you please be present fine it's a very tough topic fine even uh, one of my students has lost the job also some uh, seven years back he couldn't understand the class at all what i'm saying and then uh, i asked him it's a very tough topic whenever I, he was uh, feeling shy in asking questions he should have asked me after the class even that was also not done and then he has not in the field and then he has wrongly configured so two three persons have got stuck and then uh, people some people are unable to understand also fine it's such a tough topic so we'll be beginning our units of measures, which is one twentieth topic now. Fine, go there, and then uh, we have around one forty topics on this now. Fine, go there. So let me try to complete by tenth, uh, if not at least by twelfth. I think fine, go there. So that what happens? Uh, people are planning for a holiday actually. Because what happens? We are leaving on first of July to Madras. So uh, so let us now try to complete everything by twelfth. Otherwise, what happens? There will be a big gap actually because on the fifteenth we are leaving for Niagara. And then other places now, fine. Houston also is the plan. Chicago also plan. <laughs> I don't know when it's going to do anything. So tomorrow, what happens? We'll be having a look at units of measures. Fine. It's a very tough topic. And all of you be present there. So any questions on this now? <clears throat> Are you? No questions. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> Good, then fine. Yeah, then the case will not call today now. So, thank you. Yeah, and then no, thank you, Nana. I will call you in the evening. Yeah, so uh, Rajesh will be uh, will be connecting at 8 p.m. Eastern now. Fine. Okay, thank you, everyone. Good, then, and then we'll now meet at 9 p.m. tomorrow, India. Bye.